Hello everyone, welcome back to this video on digital communication. In this video, I am going to start the performance analysis of digital communication system. So now when I talk about the performance analysis, I must talk about the noise which is present in the digital communication system because noise is degrading the performance. So when I have to see the performance, I must see the noise. So I already told you in one of my previous videos that noise is a completely random signal. So here in this video, I'm, I will be talking about a completely random signal. So now in this video, I am going to see what is noise. After that, we will see various classification and subclassifications also. So now if I talk about the first two words, which is performance analysis, I, I must talk about the noise as I already told you, but when I talk about the analog communication system. So now then this analog com communication system was depending upon the reproduction of the frequency components at the receiver. So I must have the perfect reproduction of the frequency components at the receiver to get the high fidelity. So that is what is written in analog communication it was necessary to reproduce frequency components faithfully to achieve high fidelity. So I can say SNR was a critical quality to measure the quality of message received at the receiver. So I can say in, in analog communication system, SNR is a very important criteria to measure the quality of the output message signal received. So now in digital communication, so when I talk about the digital communication system here, I should not know about the exact reproduction of frequency components because here I'm transmitting either zero or one. So I talked about the sampling instant also, I can get that it is a positive quantity or it is a negative quantity at the sampling instant. And if it is positive, it is reproducing one and if it is negative, it is producing zero. So I just need to see at the sampling instant, the quantity is positive or the quantity is negative. If it is positive, it is giving me the output one. And if it is negative, it is giving me the output zero. I need not to consider the exact voltage. So the voltage can vary. But if it is positive, it is one. If it is negative, it is zero. So now what can happen? Here noise can interfere in such a way that if it is one, it can show a negative value. So now noise can interfere and one represents zero. So this is called contamination of noise to the signal. So now the noise determines which signal is transmitted and which signal is received. So whatever signal was transmitted, the noise is determining which signal is received and due to that, the output depends upon the noise. So I can say in digital communication, it determines which signal was transmitted. So I need to determine zero was transmitted or one was transmitted. So when I determine which signal was transmitted, so I can denote that this is my message, but whenever the hindrance would occur and whenever I'll get zero instead of one or one instead of zero, that time there would be a degradation in the quality of the output message, which is in the form of audio or the picture. So digital pictures are also there. So if noise would be there and it is converting one to zero, or zero to one that time the picture would picture quality would also be degraded. So I can say it is depending upon the noise at the sampling instant. So I can say it is depending upon SNR as well as the bit error rate or the probability of error. So now I hope you understand in digital communication, I must know about the probability of error as well with SNR. So I have two quantities which are depending upon my communication system is changing the output received message. So now the two quantities are bit error rate or which I call probability of error and SNR. So now 
noise noise which is the topic of this video noise is the voltage waveform which varies with time in an entirely unpredictable manner so now if i can predict it i will not call it a noise so now noise vary unpred in a unpredictable manner so now i can call it as a random signal so noise is a random signal and whenever it is contaminated what does contamination mean contamination means signal is added with the noise so now whenever signal this is my signal this is my noise when both of them combine it is called contamination when signal is contaminated it gives unwanted audio as i already told you and video or picture disturbances i already told you about these so now classification of noise noise can be classified into three categories first is natural noise second is man made noise and third is fundamental or internal noise so i'll be talking about all three and it's sub categories also so now first i talk about natural noise so what is natural noise natural noise as the name suggest it is present naturally in the environment so now it is due to the solar flares i hope you know what are solar flares and electronic storms and radiations in the space so due to each of them the radiations are coming to the earth when these radiations have some frequency component which mixes with the signal frequency components they hinder the signal or they contaminate the signal so now whenever the signal from solar flares electronic storms and radiations in space come to the signal and get mixed with it and contaminate it signal is changed and i'll get the disturbances so now can be it can be reduced by repositioning the antenna so the natural noise can be easily reduced with the help of antenna structure and the position and the direction of the antenna so we can easily reduce it so i have classified the natural noise as solar noise cosmic noise and black body noise so this is solar this is cosmic black body noise solar noise as the name suggests it is coming from the sun cosmic noise it is coming from the outer space black body black body noise is is the noise which is coming from the stars so now if i talk about the solar noise solar noise has a periodic nature which varies every 11 years So, so it is varying every 11 years so i can say it is periodic or it follows a cycle so this is how i can eliminate them after 11 years i can say it get intensified so i need to reposition my antenna after every 11 years so now coming to the man made noise the man made noise is due to the make and break in the circuit so if i for example if i take the electric motor and whenever there is a break in the circuit so there would be some noise so whenever we switch off it there would be some noise so this is called man made noise so now talking about the fundamental or the internal noise so now internal noise is because of the internal structures or the properties of the structures which are used or the properties of the materials which are used so i can say it is inherent within the electronic equipment because the materials which are used are inherent to the electronic equipment so i can say fundamental noise is also inherent to the electronic equipment so now it depends upon the physical nature of the material because whenever material change the fundamental noise would change now the next property is that it is not random and can be el eliminated by the proper designing of the circuit when i know that it is not random i can properly design my circuit with the help of some some materials which are having less noise so i can properly design my circuit and i can eliminate the inherent noise so now coming to its various classification so the first classification is the thermal noise the thermal noise is generated due to the random motion of free electrons 
so the why the random motion of electron is there inside any any material so the inside any material the electrons possess random motion because of the thermal energy so because of thermal energy received by them there is a random motion of free electrons and because of this random motion of free electrons there is a power which is not equal to zero so i can say the voltage average voltage would be zero but average power component would be there which is producing this thermal noise and the this thermal noise is denoted by en is equal to under root 4k tbr so now coming to the short noise why it is called so short noise is called because whenever it is generated it produces a sound like shower of lead on the metal so whenever shower of lead short lead shots on metal sound is occurring i'll classify that as short noise so it is produced in the amplifying device so what are the amplifying device if i ask you amplifying device are the example bjt diode so whenever you turn on any bjt or diode if you hear some some sound which is similar to the lead shot falling on metal so that time you'll classify it as short noise so now coming to the next noise which is partition noise so partition noise is a noise which is occurring due to the partition of the current in the various partition so now what happens so if let's suppose if i have a transistor so this is the transistor the current would partition here and here so th there would be a partition noise so if i can say it is occurring due to the random fluctuations when current divide into two or more paths so here the current is dividing into two path i can say partition noise is occurring so i can say partition noise in transistor is more than the partition noise in diode so i hope you can understand that the diode has two terminals but the transistor is having three terminals so due to that there would be more current parti partition in the transistor whereas the less current partition would be observed in the diode so due to which partition noise would be more in the transistor so now coming to the next noise which is the flicker noise flicker noise is caused at a very low frequency or i can say it is appearing at a frequency which is below kilohertz so whenever i have low frequency i'll be having flicker noise so now it occurs due to random fluctuations in the carrier density which changes the fluctuations in the conduct conductivity so whenever conductivity fluctuates it is occurring due to the flicker noise and it is occurring at a very low frequency so now coming to the next noise which is the transit noise so it is the opposite of the flicker noise it's occurring at a very high frequency so now it is occurring due to random fluctuation in the output current so here it was occurring due to random fluctuation in the carrier density so now this occurs due to random fluctuation in the output current and it is in, it is measured using the time taken by the electron to move from the emitter to the collector so i hope you understand when you have a transistor when you supply current it takes time to move from emitter to collector in ideal condition we take it zero but generally it is not zero so that time is dependent upon the transit noise or the or reversely i can say transit noise is dependent upon that time so i can say conduction conductance increases with frequency so here the conductance was fluctuating here the conductance is increasing because here i am using high frequency so here i'll conclude my session on the noise and its types i hope you understood everything still you have any doubt you can put your doubt in the comment box and i'll try to resolve it as soon as possible i hope you like this video if you like it share it with your friends subscribe to the channel and push the like button thank you